Nyang! Welcome to Delightful! It's October, the leaves are changing, the air is chilly, and it's time for some spooky dolls. This year, I'm collaborating with these awesome folks to bring you plenty of content for your viewing pleasure. It's a great cast of creepy characters this year, so make sure you check out all my friends' videos after you watch this. You can find a link to everyone's channel in the description box. I'll be making a sassy demon girl character this year. Let's get to it! Here's a sketch I drew of her. Looks pretty fun, right? Lots of body mods this time. In these early stages, I considered making her a succubus, but later changed it to just be a demon. I'm sure you can tell what attributes came from that train of thought. I'll be using this beat-up old Laguna Blue doll from Monster High. She's been through one face-up already, you can kind of see the remnants of it, and been the subject of some experimentation, so the poor thing badly needs a makeover. Let's begin by chopping off hair. Save it for other projects if you wish. Then take pure acetone to remove paint and dirt. As you can see, it did clean up the face, but this doll is permanently stained in some places. But she'll be okay for this project. Cute as they are, we don't need her fins, so off they come. I carefully slice off the molded fins with an X-Acto knife, and also remove the fin ears. Webbed hands aren't appropriate for this character, so let's switch them out. I'm replacing them with an Ever After High doll's hands. Boil some hot water and submerge your doll's head and neck. Yeah, this is an oddly common sight in my kitchen. Wait about 30 seconds for the vinyl to become soft and squishy, then yank that sucker off. If done right, no harm should come to the neck peg. To get rid of the remainder of stubble, take a pair of needle nose pliers and pull the icky hair chunks out through the neck hole. That's nice and clean. At this point, I noticed some odd scratches on the doll's chin. Not sure how that happened, but hopefully they won't be noticeable by the end. I'm really working with a junker this time. So, now that the base is all cleaned up and prepped for customizing, we can get into the meat of this project. Demons are often depicted with cloven hooves, and I'm a sucker for animal-legged characters, so this doll's going to go through some serious plastic surgery. Use a jeweler's saw as well as a strong pair of shears to hack off the limbs. Wow, that sounded... <laughs> gruesome. Anyway, in preparation for the new joints she'll be receiving, I shave off part of the leg near the end. I'll be building things back up in a different way, so shaving it down to a thinner base should keep the modifications from getting too bulky. Drill a couple holes in there to create anchor points for armature wire. I'll be using this, although I would have preferred a stiffer wire. It's all I had on hand. Feed the wire through the holes, twist them together for strength, and create a loop. If you watched my Xerneas video, this should look familiar. I decided to take it a step further than Xerneas, though, by adding an ankle joint as well. I prepared all the leg chunks in a similar fashion, attaching armature wire and making loops. I know this looks like a mess, so to keep things straight, consider marking your parts in Sharpie. I labeled mine left and right, respectively. Do a mock-up to see if things move the way you want. Looks pretty cool. To secure the armature, mix up a two-part epoxy glue and dab it around the wires. I know I talk a lot about epoxy on this channel, but it's because it's the strongest kind of material I know how to use, and it's really reliable. It sticks almost any two things together. Alright, now that we know everything is nice and secure, we can start sculpting. I recently ran out of my favorite epoxy sculpt medium, so I ordered a new kind that was available locally, and I don't like it as much. It's a lot tougher to mix and behave slightly differently, so I decided to use hot glue to fill in the majority of the shapes I wanted to create. Hot glue is cheap and quick, so in retrospect, a smart move. Although at the time I only did it because I wanted to avoid using the new epoxy until I absolutely had to. I build up blobs of glue on her hips, thighs, booty, and chest to thicken her up and create a more curvy figure. 
You can come back on dried hot glue and use the nozzle to reheat and flatten any areas that stand out. Just like with Amanita's body mods, I'm careful to maintain articulation as I build up the modifications around the hips. After another mock-up, I decided she needed one more modification above the knee. I want the character's legs to be in that semi-crouched position, and the standard joint didn't allow the leg to bend back that far, so I'm going to reposition it and fill things back in. There we go, that looks more like it. She's coming along nicely. I can't avoid it any longer. It's time for the new epoxy putty. It's so stiff to mix. My poor fingers. It's also hard to apply to the doll. I found rolling it down flat with a dowel to be the easiest mode of application. Dip the finger in water and stroke the putty hard to smooth the surface. I usually do this on the transition from putty to plastic to try and hide the seam. It was a slow go, but eventually I kneaded and pressed the stuff all over the hot glue base. To sculpt the joints though, we have to be more meticulous. Buy yourself some tiny doll-sized screws, nuts, and washers. They'll pass through and hold the legs together, but it's up to you to create the hinges. Build epoxy up slowly, and make sure the holes are the right size for your screws. I like to do it in two passes. First pass, just get some material on there to flesh out the armature. Ensure the hole is the right size, and let it fully cure. Second pass, add more material to bulk up and straighten the hinges, and make them look more presentable. While things are still curing, do another test to see if the thicknesses are correct. The closer the better, but remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can sand down the edges after it hardens. Time to embed the nuts into our sculpture. The screws will be adjustable and removable on the finished doll, but the nuts will be embedded and hidden in epoxy. So, I have the screws on the medial sides of the leg where they will be less visible. Roll a snake of putty around a nut and stick it to the lateral side of the leg. Go ahead and screw the screw in place so things are all aligned properly and let it cure. Getting the joints flush and sturdy is the most difficult part, so take it slow. For me, there's a lot of back and forth from sanding the discs down, applying a little more epoxy here and there, testing it out, carving away pieces, etc. Once the joints are finally behaving themselves, we can move on to purely cosmetic sculpting. I hide the unsightly nut with a fresh blob of epoxy, and sculpt her a pair of hooves. I also sculpted some bone-like shapes around the backs of the leg and around the joints to sell the feeling of an animal leg, and also keep the legs from overextending in the wrong direction. I also made modifications to her head. You can see I marked off certain areas with a marker first. I don't know if you noticed in the initial sketch, but this doll is going to have a pretty cool gimmick, glowing eyes. To make this possible, we need the doll's head to be removable. I cut out around the hairline to separate the head. First and foremost, using a thin and simple armature, I sculpt a pair of horns onto her forehead. I also sculpt a pair of separate ears that will get glued on later. Now, using magnets, we're going to make the crown of the head a removable piece that will attach to the face. I use more jewelry wire to create structures on her temples and forehead, and use my hand drill to hollow out shallow, magnet-sized indentions. Epoxy glue them in place, and when you do, make sure the magnets are facing the correct way. And there we go! Pretty slick if I do say so myself. I should point out that I made this as minimal as I could because all the space on the inside of the head is reserved for the LED circuit but we'll get to that later. The LEDs will be placed right up against the back of her eyes, but to give them the best possible chance, I'm going to thin down the vinyl from behind using my Dremel tool. Hold it up to a lamp to gauge the thickness of the plastic. This was pretty scary because I didn't want to drill all the way through. I got too scared towards the end, so I switched to carving tools to finish it up. I hope this helps make it look brighter. I think it does. This is a lot of modifications, so you know what that means? Sanding. Sanding for days. 
No matter how hard I try to smooth it out while I'm sculpting, there's always bumps. So wear a mask and get to work. Have a couple grades of sandpaper to help move you along. I use the rougher stuff first to shave down the big bumps, then come in with finer grades until things are nice and polished. Problem areas occur on the inside of curves. For example, this area between the neck and the chest. That's when these foam manicure sanding blocks really come in handy because you can squish it and use the edge to sand down inside the curve. Time to airbrush her. I use Vallejo Game Air Paints and people ask me what kind of airbrush I use. All I can say is a cheap one. I want to work. I coat the entire body with a surface primer first to prep the surface and help the color adhere. Then spray on bloody red. Yes, this is looking perfect. I didn't remove the leg pieces for this. I'm not sure why. I think I just forgot. Remember to bend the joints so you can paint every surface. It took two layers of paint to become this opaque. Let's get a little fancy. Using scarlet red, I blush the body around the joints and tint her limbs, horns, and ears darker towards the extremities. After that, I use black to finish the gradient at the very tips. The color looks great, but it's already coming off the joints. You have to expect this to happen. There's no good way around it except for layering pastels and sealants over and over again, which takes a while. I gave it a shot anyway. I sealed, pasteled, sealed again, but it didn't work too well this time for some reason. Temperature maybe? During this process, I also sealed the face with MSC to prep the surface for her face up. We're going for sultry and wicked eyes this time. I make initial lines with a dark red so that they're barely visible. These are just for me to get the placement of things right. Next, I use a black pencil to sketch on the eyebrows, apply some lipstick, and draw on her eyeliner and eye creases. I continue to switch between black and maroon pencils for subtle gradients and blending. Since everything else about her is va va voom, the eyelashes should be too. I was inspired by a face up my friend Pixie Lifey did on Instagram, so I'm going to draw similar floofy eyelashes. Seal the doll with MSC every time you want to build up more opacity. I build up the black until it's nice and solid. The lighter colored pencils do diddly squat when you try to draw, but wetting and lifting the pigment off with a brush seems to work. I use a cream color to highlight above the lips, under the eyebrow, and around the corners. Before I paint her eyes, I thought I'd carefully cut out and remove the layer of red paint on the head only inside the lines I've drawn. For the same reason I thinned the plastic, I want to give the LEDs the best possible chance of shining through to the other side. So fewer layers between the bulb and the outside, the better. Now I take a watered down yellow paint and fill in the color. After that's dry, I dab on the pupils. It's been a while since I used micro glitter, so let's dab some golden powder around her eyes and on her cheeks. And also add some freckles and marks just because. Spray the face a final time with sealant. Speaking of sealant, the body needs more protection too. Paint a varnish all over the body. This should keep the paint from scratching off. I usually go for three coats. And to make things matte once again, spray it down with MSC. Although I did leave certain places shiny on purpose, like her horns and hooves. I also use the varnish to glossify her eyes and lips. Taking glue and tiny slivers of black paper, I gave our demon girl a fabulous stiletto manicure. Apply glue to the underside as well for strength. It'll dry clear so you won't even see it. Next, she needs some fur on the ends of her legs, like in the sketch. So I prepare yarn wefts in red and black. 
using acrylic yarn, cut and tie a bunch of pieces to a hanger, brush them out, and iron them flat. Voila! Shiny tufts of hair! I then glue them on from bottom to top, starting with the black and then the red. This section of the leg looked long and awkward before, so I'm glad the fur fixed that. Take particular care gluing on the last hairs that will be visible. I feather them out with my brush and trim any loose hairs. After it dries, I use an eyebrow razor to shave down the fur and trim it to size. Let's not forget her tail! She has so much else going on I nearly forgot about it. I clip a wire to double the length I want the tail to be, bend it in half, and form the spade shape. Then I twist the ends together for strength. To make sure the spade shape doesn't shift around, I also bound it with smaller wire. Lay it down on your fabric. I'm using an old shirt that's some kind of cotton knit blend. Sketch the shape of the tail and cut out two pieces. I'm going to hand stitch to the halfway point, turn the fabric so pretty sides face out, and then pin it over the skeleton. Picking up where I left off, I turn the raw edges to the inside and sew the rest of the tail using what's called a ladder stitch. Basically, you make a square zigzag across the two pieces so that when you pull, it's completely hidden. Leave a gap at the base for stuffing to pass through. I'm using the fluff generated by the yarn wefts we made earlier. Sew the base shut when you're done. With watery acrylics, I fade the tip of the tail to black to match the rest of the doll. Drill into the doll's behind and set the tail in place with more epoxy glue. That's all the body mods! Let's pop her head back on! Easier said than done when you don't want to crack anything. There we go! Actually, it's kind of hard to see with that background. Okay, now you can see her. She sure took a heaping helping of body modifications, effort, and time, but it was worth it. Oh yeah, let me show you how the legs attach. I made the hinges as flush to each other as I could, but they were still a bit loose, so I inserted one of those paper washers. Now it's tight enough to hold a pose. Remember the removable skull cap? We need to put hair on that. I'm using the Doll Planet's rerooting tool, nylon hair in the color Black Magic from Dolly Hair, and silver nylon from Restore Doll. Paint it black, plug in the hair one by one, and eventually you have a full head of hair. Or a partial head. I've parted it off into sections according to the hairstyle I'm going for. If you ever wondered what a reroute looks like on the inside, this is it. To seal those loose plugs, I take a non-water soluble glue and coat everything with it, making sure to touch each plug. Now, those plugs take up a lot of space inside the head, space we need for the circuit. So to make room again, I press a piece of thick paper down into the scalp while the glue is still wet. I clip everything in place and let it dry overnight. When I come back the next day, I remove the clips and trim the paper. We've pressed back and sealed in the reroute while simultaneously creating a fresh concave surface to work with. Nice! The little prongs at the base of the neck peg are the most important part, so I'm lopping off the rest to make way for the circuit as well. Let's style the hair. I put it on the doll to section everything off and put in the curlers. Then I can take it back off for the boiling water treatment. That's convenient. Once it's dry, remove the straws and bobby pins, split and fluff the curls, and cut the bangs. I also made her a cute little pentagram bustier and a spiky black panty set. I didn't want this video to get too long, so I focused on the body mods, but for some excellent doll lingerie tutorials, check out Walker Colors' channel. We're on home stretch now. The final hurdle? Making the circuit. We're going with a parallel circuit again because that's the only one I can reliably make. This is the first time I'm using a store-bought switch, which will hopefully be better than my homemade ones. The switch will stick out of the back of the head, so I cut a rectangle from the scalp. Perfect fit.
I create a battery casing out of a tin can, insulating the battery with paper, and connecting the wires to each side. I soldered each wire together, and eventually had this. Lastly, I set it inside the scalp piece with hot glue, wiggle around the wires until they're in the perfect position to align with the eyes, and pop it back on the doll. At last, she is complete! She sure came a long way. From a scrapper doll to a finished character, those are the most satisfying kinds of customs. I've actually got a Halloween party to get to. You're invited to come along if you'd like, but I really should get going. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Annyeong! Everyone seems to be having a good time. That table needs more snacks. Well, if you promise to never do that again, and help clean up after the party, I guess you can stay if you want. Don't forget to visit these talented doll artists to continue the Halloweeny goodness. There's so many participants this year. Hextian, Moonlight Jewel, Anastasia Custom, Doll Motion, Doll's Brand New Look, Doll Mill, Tamakyu, The Doll Fairy, GM Art, Cairo's Workshop, Doll Umentary, Kozomorski Dolls, Characters Factory, and Papa Natalier. Wow, what a treat! 
bonus points if you recognize who made which doll just from the group shot. Thank you again for watching, and happy Halloween! Stay artsy! Annyeong!